Hello, and welcome to the Thinking Jew Podcast, where we dive deep into Torah and Judaism to uncover its hidden beauty. Come join us as we take a closer look and breathe new life into traditional Jewish ideas. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Moshe Siegel. Hello, and welcome to episode 73. We're currently in the time period connecting Passover and Shavuos, known as Sfiras HaOmer, or the counting of the Omer. On a practical level, there is a mitzvah to count the days and weeks of the Omer. You can find a calendar for this if you Google it, and the concept is basically for the 50 nights between Pesach and Shavuos, we count and we say the number of weeks and days it's been in the counting of the Omer. So using tonight as an example, we would say tonight is the 18th night, which is two weeks and four days to the counting of the Omer. In today's episode, I want to take a deeper look at what the Omer is really all about. So to do this, let's begin with looking at the verses in the Torah that discuss the Omer. We'll analyze these verses, and then we'll build from there. The source of the Omer is in Leviticus chapter 23, where the Torah explains that there was a special service performed in the tabernacle, and eventually in the temple, called the Korban Omer, or the Omer offering. It was a barley offering of the newly harvested grain, and it was offered on the second day of Passover. Right after explaining the process of this offering, the Torah continues and commands us to count 50 days from that service, and on the 50th day, to bring a new wheat-based offering called the Shtei Halachem, or the offering of the two breads. The Torah then tells us that on this 50th day, which we bring the new wheat offering is actually a yomtiv, a holiday, and we're prohibited from work on that like all of the other chagim. This is what we call the holiday of Shavuos, or Shavuot, which actually means weeks, referring to this seven-week period counting from the Omer offering until this offering of the two breads. So there are a lot of interesting things in these verses that we can analyze. First off, why is the Omer offering brought in the middle of Pesach? What's the connection between bringing this barley offering and the holiday of Passover? Second, why does the Torah require the Omer offering to be from barley, which is a grain that is generally not used in sacrifices? Third, and maybe most importantly, why does the holiday of Shavuos get the short end of the stick? It seems to be completely secondary in the Torah. It doesn't get its own section of verses, it's just the 50th day after the Omer offering. Doesn't Shavuos have its own inherent value beyond just completing the counting since the Omer? Lastly, it's also interesting to note that the holiday of Shavuos is the only holiday that has no date in the Torah. Every other holiday has a date. On the first day of the seventh month, it's Rosh Hashanah. Tenth day of that month, Yom Kippur. On the 15th of the first month, it's Passover. Every holiday has a specified calendar date, but for some reason, Shavuos' calendar date is undefined. It's just 50 days after the Korban Omer. Why is that? So let's dive in a little bit and try to understand this connection between Passover and Shavuos and their respective offerings. Passover is the holiday of freedom. We were taken out of Egyptian bondage and set free. And like I mentioned in episode 71, there's something very interesting in the verses regarding this freedom. When you look in the Torah, God commands Moses to go to Pharaoh many times and request the Jews' freedom. And Moses famously says, let my people go. But like we pointed out in that episode, he actually says more than that. Every time Moses says, let my people go, he adds in, v'ya'avduni, v'yachogli midbar." Let them go so that they shall serve me, so that they shall celebrate with me in the desert. What Moses was actually telling Pharaoh was let my people go so that they can have a relationship with God. The freedom requested and eventually actualized in the Egyptian exodus wasn't just a removing of the shackles of Egyptian slavery, but rather it was a freeing of the spirit, allowing it to enter into a covenant with God. The purpose of the freedom from Egypt was so that they can get to Mount Sinai and receive the Torah, to leave our physical slavery in Egypt and enter a spiritual relationship with God. So in reality, 
The holidays of Passover and Shavuos were always linked. Before any obligations of counting 50 days, before any barley offerings or wheat offerings, all the way back in Moses' earliest requests from Pharaoh, the leaving of Egypt and the entering into a relationship with God, the accepting the Torah at Sinai, were linked. The holiday commemorating our exodus was for the sake of getting to the holiday of receiving the Torah. They were always deeply bound together in purpose. With this connection in mind, let's now look at the offerings and see the role that they play in this national process. The Omer offering was comprised of barley. There's only one other offering in the entire Torah that's also brought from barley, and that is the offering of a sota. The sota is a woman accused of adultery, and she has to do a certain process to prove either her innocence or her guilt. And in that process, she brings a sota offering, which is also made of barley. The Maharal quotes the Mishnah that states that historically, barley was used as animal food. The sota therefore brings an offering of barley as adultery is an act associated with the animalistic, physical side of humanity. Likewise, the barley of the Omer, explains the Maharal, also connects to the physical side of humanity. On Pesach, the Jewish nation was born, and just like all infants who begin life with his or her physical body fully developed and functioning, but completely undeveloped in their greater life purpose and mission, on a national level, when the Jewish nation left Egypt, we became physically free, but we were at the infancy stage, physically whole, but completely lacking our spiritual development and purpose. So for 50 days following the Exodus, the Jewish nation continued to grow one step at a time. Each day they became a little more spiritually advanced, a little bit closer to God, until on the 50th day they became so spiritually developed that they were able to hear the voice of God Himself speak during the Ten Commandments. This transformation from a purely physical being to a spiritually infused being is what the counting of the Omer is really all about. On Passover, like we mentioned, we begin with a barley offering, which the Mishnah just taught us connects to the animalistic, physical side of man, the state we were in after our physical freedom. We then go through 50 days of self-development, of self-actualization, which concludes with the holiday of Shavuos, on which we bring a wheat-based shtehalechem, or two-bread offering. We, the Talmud explains and the Maral explains more in depth, is connected to the human ability of understanding and wisdom, the higher level functioning of man. So now we can understand why the Omer offering is specifically brought on Passover itself, as well as why it was brought from barley while the offering of the two breads on Shavuos is specifically brought from wheat. And this also answers why Shavuos doesn't have its own calendar date. The answer is that in reality, Shavuos is not its own freestanding holiday. It actually is just the end of the Exodus process. It's the actualization of purpose of that physical freedom that we experienced on Passover. So naturally, the date for Shavuos isn't tied to the calendar, Rather, it's tied to how long we've been working and developing ourselves since the Omer offering. So something to think about as we go through this special time period that we're in is that it's a unique time of year for reflection and self-growth. It's a time to think about how fortunate we are to not just be barley-eating animals following our instincts, but rather we're humans and we have the power to overcome and to persevere and to take tremendous strides in our spiritual growth. I give us all a blessing that we should merit using this time successfully to grow and to attain the endless spiritual heights that we truly are able to reach. Until next time, I want to wish everyone an amazing week. 
Thank you for listening to the Thinking Jew podcast and for taking the time to study Torah and deepen your connection to Judaism. If you found value in today's episode, please leave us a rating or review and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or topic requests for Rabbi Moshe, please email the Thinking Jew podcast at gmail.com or visit thethinkingjew.com.